So Aaron Whitford, yes. you have a tremendously long list of academic <laughs> accolades. Oh, wow. Well. It's, it's a little intimidating for someone like me who is just <laughs> barely a good student. But let me read some of these. So you graduated from Angelo State, mm -hmm. cum laude. You were honored as the Distinguished Student of the College of Liberal and Fine Arts at age 20. Two years later, you earned your master's degree with a perfect grade point average, and you were also the distinguished student in your college while you were in grad school. Mm -hmm. So why were your studies so important to you? Um, I, I guess grades have always been important, but I just liked school. I guess I was a um, traditional nerd by the, the sense of it. Um, so anything that I do, I look at it as if I'm going to do it, I want to do it well. And so I took that with my studies too. So did that apply, um, you obviously got your degree in English, mm -hmm. but did that apply to all your classes? Were you just engrossed by everything in a classroom? Yeah, I, I just really liked going to school and I think that's why I decided to go into teaching in college because I enjoyed that atmosphere. Um, math was not my strongest subject, but uh, I still, you know, again, wanted to do well in those classes and, and that was my goal to you know, if, if my name's going to be on it, I want it to be successful. So. Now, it seems like there are two types of students. One is where everything comes very easily and naturally, and the mm -hmm. others who just have to just bear down and work at it constantly. Yes, I was the latter. So um, I, I think I had natural inclinations just to enjoy school, but I certainly had to work for what I earned, and I had to study. I spent late hours in the library, and... Um, long hours writing essays, so uh, I, I definitely was the, the second choice of student. I had to earn, earn those grades. But Now, outside of the classroom, you were also very involved at Angelo State University. Mm -hmm. uh, among your activities were the school newspaper, the literary magazine, intramural, several honor societies. What were the activities that sort of interested you most and that you gravitated to? Oh, um, well, I was really involved in sort of the academic sector. Um, that, it was where a lot of my friends were, and so I really enjoyed being involved in that and planning activities, And but I really enjoyed um, being the editor of the Oasis magazine, the literary magazine, because um, we got to showcase other students' works, um, both art and literature, and so that was a really great platform to um, give students a voice, and that was probably one of my favorites, but intramurals was really fun, too. We weren't the best intramural team, but it was fun to play. So. Well, now, you may be being a little modest because you went to Angelo State initially uh, planning to run track, mm -hmm. uh, got injured, and so that didn't work out for you. But it looks like ASU did turn out to be the right school for you. Yes. How did it help you grow? Um, ASU is fantastic in affording a lot of opportunities for getting involved in honor societies, but um, also through scholarships. And that's really why I decided to stay and get my master's there because the scholarships were great. And I developed a really... Um, kind of a really great rapport with my professors that were there and they taught me what kind of teacher I wanted to be and so that's why I decided to stay. Now you're only 30 so you haven't right. been that far removed from Angelo State right. but it seems like it's kind of a different community now than than it was in the past. It is yeah it's grown tremendously since I was there and um, I still have really great relationships with some of the professors that I had um, I still consider them mentors and I reach out to them when I have questions about um, different teaching you know things that are, are going on with me um, but yeah it's definitely a much bigger community there than it was but I'm happy to see that growth for them. So after graduation you worked as the membership coordinator and then the director of the ASU's Alumni Association. What drew mm -hmm. you to that job? Um, I actually worked there my last year of grad school so um, partially it worked really well with my class schedule and then um, I stayed because I, I really liked the campus life and um, I think everybody wants to have a full-time job when they leave school so that was really great but it also allowed me to work as an adjunct at Howard so um, I worked as an adjunct at Howard my first year out of grad school and to kind of give me that in into the teaching community. So, that was so good. for people who don't know, what is an adjunct? An adjunct is a, a non full time teacher at a higher ed institution. So I just taught an evening class at Howard that first year and it was a tremendous time of growth. It let me be in the classroom in front of students, know what to do, what not to do, and um, that was a really 
great learning curve year for me. So before that, had you suspected that you wanted to become a teacher, or was that sort of your, your springboard into that profession? Um, I always wanted to be a teacher. Initially, I wanted to teach English and coach track, and um, then realized that I really liked the atmosphere of teaching in a higher ed institution. I liked the autonomy it afforded and um, the ability to connect with your students a little more and just the freedom to teach what you wanted to teach. And so that's initially why I decided to get my master's and um, look for a job teaching full time in higher ed. So you were sort of focused on a college campus as opposed to a secondary school campus mm -hmm. that whole time. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so talk a little bit about what you love about teaching. Gosh, um, there's so many things I love about teaching. Um, this is my seventh year teaching, so uh, I always joke that um, if they'll keep me, I'm not gonna leave. I, I really love my job and I feel very blessed to be able to say that. Um, every semester is different. You get a new dynamic of students in your classes. Um, I teach a variety of class deliveries. So I have in-person, I have online, I have hybrid, eight weeks. Um, so there's a never dull moment, everything's different, um, but the light bulb moment is really the special part of teaching when you get to encourage those students and then they get it. So that's really special. Um, and I think with teaching, my, my big kind of drive with teaching English is that I think being able to communicate effectively is a power that people need. And um, students need to be able to have a voice that can be heard and that can be heard effectively. And so that's my encouragement to them. So you mentioned you teach classes obviously in person, but also mm -hmm. online. So mm -hmm. talk about the different dynamics at play there. Do you have a preference as to which one um, you prefer? I, I do. I mean, I have a fond spot for teaching in person because there's just a natural engagement and connection you can have with people um, just face to face. But um, they're, they're so different. They're different beasts. So um, the way that you approach online teaching is much different than how you approach in person teaching. But I try to always think of myself as a student and what I would need. And that's how I approach giving my students you know, whatever they need in their classes. Now, this generation, I mean, they grew up with computers and the internet mm -hmm, and everything. Mm -hmm. So do they prefer online versus uh, versus in person? You know, it's kind of a 50-50 split. A lot of them want the online because it gives them a lot of flexibility with their schedules. And um, the type of student um, demographic that we deal with is very um, working class, so their their parents, they work full-time jobs and they need the flexibility. But some of them just like the traditional in a classroom teaching setup. So it, it's kind of a 50-50 split, but that's good. So it gives me some variety to offer. So for a traditional student, someone who's fresh out of high school, mm -hmm. you're really not that much older than they are. So <laughs> no. how, does, how does that dynamic work? Um, I, I'll be honest, I was a little worried at first, especially because I started teaching as an adjunct when I was 22. So I was basically the same age as my students. And it never really has been a problem. Um, I think it's kind of a blessing in disguise because it lets me connect with them. I think they feel there's not as much of a chasm between us. They, there's still a level of respect, but they, I think they find me more approachable, that they can ask those questions and, and not feel silly or dumb, that it's kind of more of a safe dynamic. So what do you love about Howard College? Oh gosh, um, so many things to love about Howard. Um, they, it is just such a fantastic place to work. The group dynamics are wonderful. The um, boss and employee dynamics are wonderful. And um, it's a very family oriented atmosphere, which is huge to me because I have two little boys and um, I have to bring them to campus sometimes and it's never a problem. So it's, it's more like a family than it is a workplace. I mean, they're, they're friends, they're there for you when the times are great and also when the times aren't. And I, I couldn't ask for a better environment to work in. So you mentioned a boss. In addition to being an assistant professor of English at Howard, you were also the division co-chair of the general studies program. Mm -hmm. So first of all, what is general studies and then, and then what is your role as the co-chair? Yeah, um, general studies is, um, encompasses several um, different disciplines, so there's English, math, biology, it's basically um, the courses that are the basics for all students. And uh, we split those duties between two people, so I basically oversee English, math, um, education, and then developmental studies and economics. So um, all of the teachers in that realm, I kind of oversee and make sure that 
you know, everything's going, going well. Now, again, that seems like a lot of responsibility <laughs> for a young person um, and a young mom. Yeah, um, but it, again, it's, it's so flexible, and I can't stress enough that the reason I think my job is so wonderful is because the people that I work with are so wonderful. Um, most of the people have been there for a long time, and even the ones that haven't, it's such a, a positive dynamic between one another that, I mean, it makes even a division co-chair position that much easier because everybody's nice to each other and as it should be. So like as when you were a student, uh, now that you are a professional, you also serve on Howard College's Faculty Senate. You are a mentor to first-time college students and you have published and presented several papers. Mm -hmm. So why do you feel it's important to be involved professionally outside of your classroom? Um, I think it gives you a better feel for the atmosphere on campus. Um, I, the mentorship between those first year college students or first time college students um, is so important to them because if they've never been on campus, they don't have anybody in their family to refer back to. They need somebody to take, you know, to take them under their wing and I love doing that. I, that's like one of the favorite parts of my job is that individual connection and making sure that people are um, living up to their potential because so many of them don't know what that is and encouraging them in that. So, um, and I think faculty senate, like making sure that you know your staff and faculty have a voice, um, is hugely important. And Howard's really great about listening to the, you know, concerns of the of the employees there. So, you are uh, in addition to being professionally accomplished, you're very active in your church, which is San Angelo First Assembly. Mm -hmm. You serve on the worship team and as a life group leader and a nursery volunteer. Why is your faith so important to you? Um, I, I really think that that's kind of the nucleus of my life, and that's where everything is centered. And when I make sure that that is the, the center point of my focus, everything else falls into place. Um, so being involved there is a joy. Um, I don't look at it as, you know, I gotta punch the clock or I have to do this. Um, it's an honor to get to serve in those capacities. And I think that loving people well is a charge that all of us are given and those certain areas really allow me to do that and and it's like I said just a joy to get to volunteer in those capacities. How does that sort of manifest itself in your daily life? Um, being involved with others? Yeah, yeah um, I mean it more so than for example our life group when we meet at our house it's not just a Wednesday night when people come over to our house it's you're developing friendships and those lasting relationships and um, I, I would hope it's encouraging to them, but it's equally as encouraging to me, very much an iron sharpens iron kind of a thing. Now, as a result of your church involvement, you've had a lot of opportunities to volunteer in the community. Mm -hmm. What do you feel most drawn to, most, most called to do in your volunteer service? Oh my goodness. Um, well, I'm really involved in a, a young mothers group, um, and by young mothers, I mean mothers of young children. And I think that reaching out to the people who feel like they don't have a place to belong is kind of near and dear to my heart. Making sure that people feel included, that they have somewhere to go and, and people to belong to. And same with, with the moms group, with our life group at church, I think reaching those people kind of on the outskirts and on the fringe is really important to me. Same with my students, like everybody needs a place to belong and somewhere to, to call home or a safe home base. And I think that's what drives me in volunteering. How do you define leadership? Oh goodness, um, leadership to me, I think is much more an action than it is just speaking words to somebody. Anybody can say, um, you know, go do this, but I think a leader is somebody who's willing to take that first step and pave the way and do what they're asking others to do. Who's a leader who has both inspired and, and shaped you to some extent? Oh, goodness, um, I'm, I feel very blessed that I have several leaders in my life that I can refer back to. Um, I definitely think um, the first people that come into my head are my husband and my parents. Um, my husband is uh, just very creative, but he's also brave. He's never afraid of trying something new, and I think that pushes me out of my comfort zone, which I need sometimes. And um, he's willing to, I mean, get his shins beat up and bloody because he is truly paving a way, and that inspires me. And then my parents on the flip side have taught me just the power of hustle. Um, if you want something, you work for it and you go get it. And 
that's what I saw in most of my family, that if they wanted something, they worked for it. It was never given to them. And I feel like that was the same with me, that they were like, okay, if you want this, then go work for it. We believe that you can do it, but you have to earn it. And that was one of the most influential things that they ever could have taught me because I could do it if I worked hard enough. And I think that's what drove most of my professional and academic life is, okay, I want this, so I'm gonna earn it. So your mom wrote this about you, and I want, oh. <laughs> I want to read it to you, and then I want you to, to respond to it. She said, to Aaron, if something is worth doing, it's worth doing it with excellence. Aaron is dedicated to the service of others, whether it's in her career, at church, in volunteering, or with her family, she finds a true fulfillment in serving others well. I thought that was quite lovely. Uh, that is, and I mean, what a wonderful, I mean, moms are supposed to say that, right? <laughs> um, but um, I, I think that, I mean, it makes me kind of get choked up, but that's, I couldn't have said it better myself, that those, all those things are important to me, and if I, if I do something, I want it to be done well and with excellence and um, something that I'd be proud to put my name on. So. You mentioned your husband, Brandon, and uh, he also works at Howard College. He Last does. year, he was a 20 under 40 honoree mm -hmm. when he was, uh, I guess you could say, the chief videographer there at uh, Angelo State University. Mm -hmm. He is such an excitable guy, he as is, you and yeah. I both know. <laughs> was he more excited about his selection last year or yours this year? Oh, gosh. In true brain and form, he was so excited about um, my selection this year. He's so humble and gets kind of sheepish when people acknowledge him for his well-deserved accomplishments and um, he was he was so excited and um which made me that much more excited so it's really fun to get to celebrate with um with the people that you care most about he's also somewhat of a of a hipster a little bit. I, 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 mean, I, know, I know that at times you have to sort of direct his dress, so I was just wondering, what do you think of this ensemble? I mean, you look great. So I think if you can, you know, get that in Brandon size, we'll just put it on mm. him and y'all can be twins. Twins. Yeah. I love it. So Aaron, yeah. congratulations. Thank you. <laughs>